Hello guys, I hope you are having a wonderful day wherever you are. This is your host Jesse, back with another episode of Bullish Banter, uh, proper edutainment. Um, we took a significant break and uh, there were a lot of parties in between. How are you doing Rufus? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. So I'm good. Uh, see if you, have, you haven't taken lunch. No, I have. Uh, I think I just my brain is working too fast for the lunch I've taken. <laughs> you know, you know what they say in the streets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, anyway, how have you been since uh, we celebrated the uh, five-year anniversary? I think a lot has happened in between, but good things, I guess. Yeah, so far so good. I uh-huh. think uh, the markets are responding well. Uh-huh. Uh, volatility is increasing, yeah. especially uh for today now that you are headed into the FOMC interested decision mm-hmm. so i expect some uh, good numbers to be happening from that okay yeah, yeah i think uh, this week we have three major banks so of course tomorrow as well that would be on 27th uh by the time this episode will be out i think we'll already know the interest rate decision so i think the market snapshot will cover it i think during the week um in regards to what you are going to discuss today um we'll be deviating not deviating per se but rather deep uh, taking a deep dive into um uh, long term investing i think we have done a significant cover up on uh, uh, short term trading yeah. and uh, uh, I, i think it's always good to know where you can diversify your assets yeah, yeah i think uh, at this point in time yeah it's very important to cover more on the stock market investing side okay especially considering that fx pesa just added over 1500 stocks on the platform yeah so you will get a lot of them in there um in regards to stocks market i think the best indicator of where the markets are going mm-hmm. and obviously the investing landscape are two things in my book uh, mm-hmm. inflation because you are able to know okay can i spend a little more or should i need to spend to save more or invest more and the overall indices on the markets i was looking at uh, just within the last three months i know some time back we had seen nvidia doing almost 100 plus uh, Uh, actually Nvidia eventually got to 200 uh, percent returns year to date what well, you see yeah. and just three months um UT100 roll the Nasdaq index yeah. has done a 37 percent rise yes from around 11,600 to 16,000 yeah that is almost 5,000 um uh, price appreciation and one interesting fact I think I'll share when the podcast goes out is um um the tech stocks added market cap of 4.6 trillion dollars. Yes, it's a uh, it's been a tech boom year. Yeah. Uh the Nasdaq has reported the best first half of the year yeah. in uh, on record. Yeah. So it has never really performed like that. Yeah. And I think much of the performance can be credited to the tech companies. Yeah. I I think the top 7 have mm-hmm. been the most magnificent. Uh-huh. And if you look at the top 20, yes. they basically carry the entire index. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, <coughs> we have seen i think nobody asked this question a while back and i've been really thinking about it do you think the talk about ai is basically you know um white smoke and no fire in between because i think that has been part and parcel of some of the uh, price action traders and investors have been taking um now that we have data coming in from the earnings season yeah uh earlier this week we saw earnings coming from uh, microsoft mm-hmm. uh, we also an- uh, saw earnings coming from uh, alphabet okay. this is uh, google okay and both companies had better than expected earnings yeah uh, majorly coming from their cloud uh, segments okay so the fact that uh, the cloud services provided by google and microsoft mm-hmm. are contributing to most of their earnings beat uh, this uh, in the last quarter basically means that uh, those two segments are the ones that are benefiting the most from uh, the ai uh, progress okay so it's no longer hot here there is data backing it up i think uh, now that we have covered what has happened in terms of price appreciation i'd like us to dig a little bit deeper on some of these companies yeah. um i think today 26 so we have just had uh, five new products from samsung yes. which is uh, i think a good competition and i think they are 
improving significantly on, the, on their quality yeah. as well as attracting uh, attracting rather quality competition from you know Xiaomi yeah. uh, of course Huawei still there yeah. um, what is there than Oppo yeah. uh, in terms of making similar products that was the flip phones and obviously uh, the Z Fold and the rest yeah. and uh, we saw I think when we covered the Apple uh, new product that they launched so far um, the price in the let's say the impact on the price, specifically on Apple, has not been significant yes. compared to other products which are measuring on uh, services. Yes. So is it that, especially in the tech sector, companies which have other service provisions, like yes. Google Cloud, yes. tend to perform better and give earnings, uh, you know, uh, better returns to their investors yeah. compared to maybe product-oriented companies, at least within the tech as well? Uh, I think most of the companies in the tech sector have, has quite a number of uh, segments that are generate them revenue and profits. Yeah. So, <clears throat> according to the current trend, mm-hmm. uh, I think a better way to focus on these on the is on the CAGR, mm-hmm. the compound, compounded annual growth rate. Yeah. So the fact that we have uh, AI mm-hmm. outpacing all other sectors. Yeah. Uh, I think any company that has a hand or some form of revenue generation from yeah. an AI-enabled product, mm-hmm. then it stands a better chance of uh, outperforming the market. Okay. For instance, uh, if you look at the traditional fang, that's the Facebook, Apple, Amazon, yeah. uh, Microsoft, and Netflix. Uh, sorry, <clears throat> Netflix and Google. Yeah. Um, you notice that nobody would have really expected at the beginning of the year that Facebook would be outperforming all these companies. True. Yeah. In fact, if you look at uh, Apple stock right now, it's uh, doing much worse compared to the benchmark index, the Nasdaq. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think I personally have my reservations on Apple, especially. I mean, they do give you good returns. That is guaranteed. Yeah. But definitely from their services seg- services segment, you know, um, maybe Apple Music, uh, Apple, uh, the cloud ecosystem. Yeah. I think that generates more revenue to them. Yeah. So I have never really, I think since the start of when they launched that new product and the impact it had on the market, yeah. I've been following more on the growth of the other services sector, yeah. which is more uh, revenue oriented. And I think that is where I, I get the value for uh, uh, money. And of course, this is not an investment advice. <laughs> yeah, for Apple, I think um, if you follow Warren Buffett's uh, advice, yeah. who has been a major investor in Apple, yeah. uh, he basically says find a really good company, yeah. but don't buy it expensively. Yeah, so so the problem with Apple, it's uh, mostly trading at a much higher multiple uh-huh. compared to other companies within the same category. Mm. So <clears throat> you don't get so many chances to buy Apple when it's cheap. Yeah. So even when the market is going down, Apple would go down uh, compared to other companies. That's significant so, margin. Yeah. At the same time, this year we had some key developments. Uh-huh. I think they are facing a lawsuit of up to one billion dollars. Okay. Uh, yeah. From uh, basically blocking some apps uh, within their app store within Europe. I've seen I've seen <coughs> that move, and uh, I find it interesting given that uh, you pose as a democratic company, yeah, and even their political leanings as sort of been um, uh, so liberal yeah. but when it comes to financial services yeah. including the 30 percent uh, tax on any company with, uh, that generates revenue from their clients yeah. you are being restrictive and more conservative in that and i think it doesn't allow for innovation and experimentation especially within the tech sector yeah given you have a very good ecosystem that if you allow this one you yeah. definitely solidify um, your position because other companies will come yeah. they'll develop quality product they'll allow anyone to come just with a modest regulation yeah. and uh, market share of theirs will definitely have a very significant decline um i think <coughs> sorry for this yeah now uh, i think over the last two decades um some of the top performing companies have been uh, operating this revenue model where they basically charge a tax you know like uh like uh, the toll that we pay on the road. Yeah. So they create an ecosystem and then they charge a tax for people to access that ecosystem. Mm. The same way you can uh, create a bridge and then charge people to cross that bridge. Mm. So it's the same thing uh, we saw with uh, Safaricoms and Pesa. So they provide you with a very nice ecosystem. Where you're able to send and receive money, but they charge you every time you transact. So for Apple, they created this massive ecosystem. But then their revenue model is based on the, pe- uh, the amount of money people transacting within uh, that ecosystem. So I think 
tech has this um, S curve where technology will reward you for quite a period of time. And then after some time, uh, the curve starts to flatten. And now you need more innovation on top of that product in order to keep earning the revenues. Okay. So I think in the fintech industry, which is uh, one of the most uh, fastest growing industries, uh, if you keep on depending on that revenue, uh, charging people for transactions, mm. you'll get left behind. Right now we have apps like uh, Strike. Uh, we have Cash App that have much lower uh, charges on transactions. And I think it's a spiral down to zero. Yeah. So eventually we'll have these ecosystems where you allow businesses to, to transact without charging them per, per transaction. Yeah, another interesting company which had uh, the earnings report on the 25th. Yeah. Microsoft. Yes. That one, uh, I think if and when they complete their Activision acquisition, yeah. they should make a significant impact within um, not just the gaming industry, yeah. but within the tech sector because now they'll have an ecosystem of exclusivity, yeah. what I think Apple has been enjoying for the last six, seven years. Yeah. You, you know, you have your own uh, gaming console, yeah. you have quality uh, uh, games to uh, you know, customize it specifically to that. Yeah. And uh, you'd see they also plan to sort of rent a game yeah. even if you're not within their, um, you know, yeah. um, their ecosystem. I think uh, even though the FTC tried it uh, unsuccessfully multiple times, I yeah. don't understand why they are worried about it because if you look at all the factors, it's not like um, they'll completely obliterate competition. Yeah, I think it's uh, quite political. I remember when uh, the acquisition of Activision was announced last year, mm. uh, <clears throat> event, uh, immediately we saw Activision uh, spiraling higher. And of course, Microsoft shares were really going up. Mm -hmm. But then that has been dragged for an entire year and uh, the ac acquisition has not yet happened. So for now, I don't think it's news. I think the markets have already priced it in. And uh, there's a good chance that towards the end of the year, the acquisition will be concluded. And um, I think also, even in uh, Activision, they also need to incorporate the AI products in order to improve and uh, get to beat the S curve. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I think the chair of FTC has done similar lawsuits multiple times. I was listening yeah. to some analysis on it, and uh, she has unfortunately had some, um, you know, uh, a lot of court cases basically uh, ruled against her. So, yeah. like you said, it, it looks more, uh, you know, political. Yeah. But I hope, of course, uh, to the investors and obviously to the general funds of both companies, yes. we have a good merger that can be able to re good earn good returns to investors. I think uh, Microsoft has researched after, you know, sometimes Windows 98 to Windows 10. Yeah. Uh, we had some significant issues with it. I, I remember you could use it and you would wonder what... Yeah, what is this? <laughs> so, in terms of product quality, yeah, I think they have improved significantly. Yes, and with the AI, I think is it being? Yeah. Yeah. have you used Bit. it? Uh, yes, I've, I've used it. I think it's also a good competition within the uh, auto-generative uh, responses. Yeah, compared now, to ChatGPT, uh, Bing is doing really well. Yeah. Uh, yes, it doesn't have the, as much numbers as ChatGPT. Yeah. But the fact that it's able to Google real-time news. Compared to chat GPT, which cannot access the internet, yeah. uh, it gives you a huge advantage when you're doing your search and research. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now to another company, uh, which I think the streaming business basically. Yeah. Um, we have seen. I uh, think when when they announced, uh, was it in January? Netflix would restrict. Uh, password sharing. Yes. It did dent their numbers, yeah. but I think with the ongoing Hollywood uh, actors and of course scriptwriters strike, it is causing some product, uh, you know, release. Yes. It has sort of resurged again, uh, good streaming numbers, good revenue so far. Do you think uh, they still have, the, they can enjoy the market uh, share that they they have, of course, with uh, Amazon uh, and, and Hulu and all these other streaming services trying to come in, or even even Apple TV. Um, I would say uh, the number one thing that is uh, going on for Netflix uh, is this culture that they created during COVID. So when people stayed back at home, there was a record number of uh, subscriptions. I uh, remember that's when they hit 200 billion uh, subscribers. Yeah. So during that period, people got uh, hooked to their product. And of course, the sharing was uh, present. 
So when they remove the sharing, people still need to keep up with that taste uh, of capturing the, you know, the newest show on Netflix. Yeah. And uh, that has really gone well for them over the last two years. Okay. So besides this, there's also the issue of AI. So the fact that you're seeing the actors and uh, writers demonstrating in Hollywood, it's because NVIDIA is uh, taking advantage of AI to create content faster and uh, cheaper than before. I think uh, the biggest issue with uh, Netflix before COVID uh, was uh, spending too much budget in uh, movie production, mm. which would uh, dent their profits. So now that they're incorporating AI to lower their overheads, then they are getting much higher profitability. Interesting decision, because I was listening to some Americans talking about the situation. Eh? Yeah. Of course, AI is not a good um, it's not a good addition to the movie, uh, to the script writers. I think they do deserve the employment given uh, yeah. the effort they put on it. Yeah. <laughs> but also... <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a business and uh, the goal is to make profits. That's you know, the point. The responsibility mostly is to the investors. And that is where Wall Street comes in because Wall Street are very... Yeah. Uh, focus on the bottom line. Yeah, what are very unforgiving. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, they will keep at it so long as their margins are okay. Yeah. They will either dump it and move to other assets or, you know. Um, the thing is, uh, at the beginning of the year, mm. in January, uh, some of the major highlights in uh, the top news uh, websites, yeah. were Tesla is uh, firing employees. Yeah. Uh, Facebook had uh, the, one of the biggest uh, firings happening. And uh, with those firings, now you can compare with the performance of the stock. Uh, I think Facebook is currently about 135% high since the beginning of the year. Yeah. So some of these tech companies were literally firing people left, right, and center, including Microsoft. And now that they are doing better than other companies, you can see the result of that restructuring. The margins. But then, uh -huh. yeah, the background story behind it is that they were developing AI products that would be able to implement the same task at much lower costs compared to hiring actual people. Yeah, I have a very interesting question. Yeah. You know, so since you said AI has been <laughs> involved in product creation, yeah. uh, are you, are you, have you joined Threads? Ah, no, no, I haven't joined that. <laughs> now, <laughs> is it possible that when they told, uh, you know, whichever AI they use, yeah. make me something like Twitter? Yeah. <laughs> it went and basically got the codes of, of Twitter because it's similar. Yeah. And uh, like I said, definitely there has to be some form of human input. Yeah. But uh, in order to like streamline the process and make it faster, yeah. then you have to incorporate AI. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, of course, there is still the other side before we get into the maybe the pointers anyone would want to look at yeah. before buying or purchasing in a share yeah. in, an, uh, in any company. Yeah. Um, there is, of course, the rebranding of the new apex.com. Yeah. And I think uh, there is obviously both sides of the coin. Yeah. Um, I think X, um, SpaceX, Tesla, yeah. it's basically the same ecosystem. Yeah. So when we, when we, what we are seeing with X, is it something that uh, you think uh, eventually, however they form it out, yeah. it will be a company worth reinvesting in? Because I remember before, yeah, Twitter got delisted. Yes, I was really a fan of it because of its uh, its significant play within the just not political, but even the finance. Yeah, and fintech. Even, so, yeah, yeah, it was something you could get in, and you choose which side of Twitter you want to get in: finance Twitter, comedy Twitter, banter Twitter, yes, um, sports Twitter. Yeah, you know, and you'd have significant uh, conversations yeah. with people, yeah. and that interaction meant that uh, you know, yeah. The, company was a good company yes i think where they dropped the ball in my in my view was how to structure their revenue yeah. in that they do not have maybe an overhead in terms of recurrent expenditure vis-a-vis yeah. -vis the revenue they get beat from advertisement or whichever other product they sell um i think going forward there's a uh, quite a number of uh, positive things going for twitter mm -hmm. uh one thing first is that uh, the take rate for twitter just before elon joined uh, it was a uh, hundred percent. So all the revenue generated by the Twitter platform would be owned by Twitter, and uh, nothing would go to the creators. So for you, as an average Twitter user, you will not get anything. So earlier this month, uh, Twitter shared revenues with the content creators. So for those people who are verified, uh, they were posting content consistently, and uh, Twitter would uh, post advertisements in between their content then they received uh, something for it. Okay. So that's one huge thing that is going very positively for Twitter. Because if, uh, let's say, you have a huge following 
and uh, let's say you normally do blogging yeah you would find that most people have been doing their blogging on a substack medium and other and then, uh, blogging websites yeah but now you can post an entire blog on twitter you can post videos uh recently so taka carlson yeah. joining twitter yeah. uh rotate yeah yeah uh, and they are doing some good numbers yeah. so yeah. the long form videos is actually an interesting perspective because yes you do not need to go to youtube yes it's so a, that's a, a dent on streaming numbers for you know other yeah. services so i think that's a good thing that's why i'm, I'm very keen to see what it does next yeah. even because, the long form posts is basically an attack on facebook yeah yeah and by the way and obviously yeah. blogging as well because yeah, facebook I, blogs yeah. youtube yeah. tiktok all those kinds of content that you can post on all those other social medias yeah. you can also now post on twitter it it will be interesting to see where it goes because i think it's yeah. one of those companies Uh, yeah. tech companies basically and of course in terms of revenue yeah. uh, there's also the other side of our uh, subscriptions yeah. so now that uh, more and more people are subscribing i know you have a uh, blue tick yeah. so your eight dollars <laughs> will be worth a lot if the <laughs> company was to go back to an uh, ipo model yeah that's why uh, i'm bullish on it you yes. know i'm waiting yeah. for yeah. I'm really invested in seeing how it evolves. Yes. I think it's like I said it's one of those tech companies to watch for myself yeah. in the coming months. Yeah. On top uh, of that, mm-hmm. uh this the numbers yeah. like uh the daily active users for Twitter have really increased. Yeah. And uh through the management from uh, Elon uh to the new CEO they were, they were actually rebuilt trust yeah so all those twitter files that were released uh, at the early stages of the acquisition mm. uh, we know that uh, elon has been fixing the code yeah. uh, he has removed all the shadow bannings mm-hmm. so people are more comfortable and uh, trusting the platform okay. and of course he has this feature where he is able to uh, fact check on our posts that are popular on the platform yeah so mm-hmm. With that being rebuilt in the platform yeah. if twitter was to do an ipo today i would definitely be in go on sorry so if uh, twitter was to do an ipo today then i would definitely make sure i buy some uh, shares for myself definitely now i think earlier on in the year we covered when things are basically showing um, negative growth you know yeah. cpi inflation basically is high yeah. you are seeing people maybe losing jobs and maybe you have some money yeah. you want to invest yeah. i picked up very interesting data sets yes um energy sector i remember we said a lot about the energy sector they tend to do well yeah. uh, in so far the companies uh, out of the s&p 500 companies basically yeah. within the energy sector the chevrons and the rest yes they are Have done a return to investors of 15.9%. So that's a good thing within the energy sector in general. Actually that's a good recovery like uh, exactly. in the last three last quarter after that the worst performing sector. Yeah, last four quarters yeah. from Q1 they had 17 point, negative 17.9. Yeah. Q4 last year basically they yeah. had a negative 29 yeah. so i think they have really recovered steadily even though the prices of oil uh, barrel has been yeah. basically hovering around uh, between 70 and 80 dollars yeah and yeah. Uh, that is quite low regarding what they would like the markets to purchase it yeah. the best performing would, was uh healthcare with the 29% uh, when was that uh, Q4 so far from all the companies that have released their earnings report so far for uh, Q2. I think we need to check that like uh, um for the first and second quarter mm. if that's January to June. Yeah. The best performing sector is our tech and uh, I'm talking second about, best is communications. Uh, I'm talking about April to June. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, communications we are coming to communications. Yeah. They had a 15.3 that is communication services. Yes. Yeah, tech sector had a 19.2% yes. in, uh, in 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 Q2. Yeah. So basically what I'm trying to say earlier on in the year when inflation is high there are defensive sectors which tend to perform well the energy sector yeah. maybe um healthcare um maybe technology and uh, materials uh, that would be the defense yeah. just to cut you short mm-hmm. um I think inflation was our highest last year mm-hmm. 2022 yeah uh, and also high in 2021 yeah and uh that's the year where the best performing sector was energy Yeah. Uh, we also saw healthcare being pretty strong. Yeah. Uh and of course the defensive uh due to the war in um, Ukraine. Ukraine. Yeah. But then this year has been uh, majorly dominated by tech and uh, communication services. Mm-hmm. Uh main reason uh inflation has been really going down. 
Uh, from the last reading, inflation in the U.S. was uh, 3%, just 1% shy of the Fed's target of uh, 2%. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we are seeing inflation really come down yeah. and uh, tech companies are taking advantage of new, inv new innovations in AIA, uh, they tend to be more resilient in these periods. So after having a negative year, which was last year, uh, the end of the bear market, uh, the companies that tend to lead the new bull market tends to be the, in the tech sector. Yeah. So that has happened historically over and over again. And that may um, explain why there's a big boom in tech compared to other sectors. Now, um, you know, you said bear market and we have had a water bull run for the last three months. Yes. 20%, uh, 16%, uh, S&P 500. Yeah. And obviously, I think uh, um, the dollar index also weakened at some point yeah. know, and also the E40 for those who trade the German stock also have had a significant they had a drop a little bit mm. but recovered I think that right now they are on the highs of almost three months ago Yeah. and finally Japan stock market has gained almost 28% within the last three months yes. now if you look at that yeah. and you want to continue investing yeah. now is it too expensive now or do you want to wait for a correction or uh, fun the, fact uh -huh. Uh, last year, yeah. uh, when uh, we were looking at a bear market, but the energy uh, sector was uh, really hot, mm -hmm. um, the top companies that were really doing well yeah. were one, Occidental Petroleum. I yeah. remember Warren Buffett's hand in the company. Yeah. So it made over 100% in the year. Uh, another surprising stock that uh, was up over 100% was Crocs. You know, like when people just came out of uh, the pandemic <laughs> lockdowns, they literally went out shopping. Uh, they had excessive savings. And uh, Crocs uh, was one of the beneficiaries that made some good performance. Yeah. I think Tesla was up like 69%. Um, then, fast forward, you come to this year, you realize that uh, Tesla is still doing well. So for Tesla, I think it's a K, uh, more of a constant performer mm -hmm. over the last couple of years, has consistently beat the market over time. So that would be a key factor to focus on if you're looking to invest longer term. Okay. On the other hand, the point I'm trying to pass here is that uh, past performance doesn't guarantee future performance. So well, another, let, let's say, uh, another key performer uh, is uh, NVIDIA. So if you look at the history of earnings, the company has consistently beat uh, its estimates and of course beat the benchmark uh, index. So well, on one hand, you might look at uh, the approach this way. Uh, if a company did well this year, and it may not automatically imply that it will do better next year, but then if you look at the books and see the history of performance of that company and has been consistent, then it might make sense to bet on that company to keep doing well. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, what I'm getting is uh, do your homework very well in, in the words of Warren Buffett. Find a company that uh, is a good company. Yeah. Uh, do your due diligence. Yeah. Um, decide what position of your portfolio or your cash you will put into it. Yes. And uh, let the world... Um, lead wherever it will be, yep. it will go. I think right now, I believe the war in Ukraine is still a major issue, and the, the of course, um, the slight tensions yeah. between the Asian economies and the US, of course. So, so speaking of, uh, <laughs> before we go, uh, are you still investing in Safaricom or are you considering going offshore? Ah, still in there, <laughs> still in there. We are yeah? sticking it. Uh, in fact, yeah. um, I mean. I still believe in the resilience of the Kenyan economy. Yeah. So, in it, it so uh, in, besides the tech sector in Safaricom, yeah. uh, I have some holdings within the insurance services. Yes. I think insurance services in Kenya are yeah. a good bet for me now. Yeah. So that is what actually is maintaining my portfolio in a positive. <laughs> yeah. And of course, um, personally, um, I normally say this: if you're going to eat a toad, eat the juiciest. <laughs> 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 There's no way I'm going for Safaricom shares, and this is not a diss, yeah. uh, and it's not investment advice. Yeah. But if I have the option between Safaricom and Tesla, mm. you know my choice. Okay. Of course, we are still keeping with the Tesla, yeah. and uh, like I said, uh, sometimes back I was uh, looking at Apple. Yeah. I uh, think I uh, should be considering if the price is right again. Yeah. But uh, right now, like I, I'm trying to look within the financial services. Yeah. I think they are 
scare due to the January issue yeah. uh, has sort of torn down. Yeah. So they look like they are stabilized. Let's see what the financial reports. I think they have beat the earnings. They have good deposits so far. Yeah. So I believe that is a good sector. Yeah. Um, and then we see what Q3 has for us. Yeah. What's your number one bet for the next quarter? For the next quarter. Yeah. Like uh, sector and company wise. Wow, that's a hard question. Uh, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> Tesla is a good bet. I think with the new Giga factory in Brazil. I think uh, is it Brazil? They are Germany. looking to open a Giga factory in India that will produce in yeah. uh, over five hundred thousand yeah. vehicles per year. Yeah, that so one's one. huge. And there was a news on uh, it was it Indonesia as well. Yeah. So he has been meeting with some people there. Yeah. So I think that's a good bet. Um, I will always go with JP Morgan. Yeah, I will always go with it. Uh-huh. Think um, based on what their deposits grew it, it, between that um, basic uh, bear market. Yeah, um, like you said, if yeah. you eat a toad, yeah. find yeah. the juiciest. Yes, they are the biggest bank. So I think all the other scares drove yeah. some significant people into it. Yeah, so I think they should perform well. Given now um, uh, we are looking. To, at the peak of uh, the FOMC interest rate decision, yeah. and the job numbers are looking, the NFP numbers have been consistent as well. So I think uh, they should not have a problem in getting their NPLs to yeah. reasonable levels. Yeah. Um, which other one? What about you? As I think for the, <laughs> I think I've done. Uh, if for you me, ask me to, it's uh, JP number one. You can interchange. For me, Tesla, Tesla is number one for me. <laughs> uh, I'm also looking at uh, Palantir. Uh, Palantir has been uh, one company with consistent revenue, yeah. and it's only just but expanding. Okay. So a majority of its revenue generation is coming from uh, government contracts, and um, they are so aggressive. At some point, uh, all the U.S. departments could be using the Palantir software as their uh, OS. Okay. So I think those contracts can be really long term and rewarding for the company. Maybe maybe we can uh, <coughs> spit ball. I think uh, so that we don't limit uh, we you know the focus on a few yeah. and somebody goes tomorrow to MT4 and, uh, yeah. and puts so in this, 10, ten lots. <laughs> this is uh, yeah, this is not investment advice yeah. to our listeners. Yeah. So it's only uh, companies that we highlight that you might consider adding to your watch list yeah. doing further research yeah. and if you independently decide this is the right uh, stock for me to invest then you make that decision yeah so i've also been uh, looking at a couple of uh, other companies uh, i think applied materials is really good um, yeah I mean. you know what they say when uh, when they, we say in a gold rush uh, you focus on the guys that are selling the shovels. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for applied materials, they basically make the infrastructure that is used to make semiconductors. So the fact that uh, there's a huge fight happening right now globally, where the US is fighting China, Japan, uh, in terms of uh, semiconductor production, uh, the developers in the semiconductor industry. So that's becoming quite a challenge, and uh, the US-based companies are about to benefit mostly from this. Um, I think I'll add to there, um, ExxonMobil yeah. from the energy sector. Yeah. With the rebound in oil prices to, I think, uh, by Q3, we should have it at around 80. Yeah. I think they should uh, that should bump up their revenue a little bit. Yeah. So ExxonMobil, Chevron Corporation, yeah. I think those are good. Oh, and Ford. Yeah, Ford has really improved, and uh, with the new deal with Tesla in terms of charging ports, yeah. I think that should add up to their F one fifty sales. Yes, and uh, of course their venture into electric vehicle. Yes, given I know within the other um, you know the um, fossil fuel the car they are quite solid. Yeah, so I think in terms of just modest revenue, not. Um, overpriced. Yeah, I think that's an addition. Yeah, and of course, uh, I know a listener would say uh, they are just mentioning all the you know the key highlight companies, Nvidia, Tesla. Yeah. There are other really good stocks uh, in the, the U.S. stock market. Yeah. I think some of the highlights that are not very well known. Uh, main good companies such as uh, Sherwin Williams. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the biggest paint maker in the U.S. Mm. Um, the fact uh, that it tends to correlate very well with economic performance. Uh, for instance, right now, uh, we have almost an all-time low unemployment rate in the U.S. Yeah. So when people have more money, uh, they basically improve their homes. Mm. And uh, Sherwin Williams is a major beneficiary. And uh, we saw from the earnings last week showing that the companies are doing really well. Yeah. So at the same time, these uh, companies such as uh, 
do you call this uh oil pool mm. uh they basically deal with uh, washing machines so um it's only when you have money that you consider replacing your washing machine improving expanding and of course when there's new homes being con- constructed mm. then it comes with uh, more demand so, so those are some of the ideas that I'm uh, playing with to see which one has the most potential of uh, making it over the next cycle um there is this uh, saying eh? yeah yeah uh, i think if you if you if you decide not to diversify your portfolio yeah. you might want to pick a good company yeah. and uh, stick with it so besides the ones you my picks are mostly financial services because people like to transact every day yeah. and financial innovations is one of the fastest growing i believe yeah, yeah. blackrock corporation Mm, interesting yeah. Yeah. interesting <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah i'm betting on yeah. approval regarding the bitcoin etf yeah. and more uh, legal um, you know um regulations within yeah. the crypto transaction yeah. the settlement yeah. and obviously um so it will be blackrock and citadel yeah. i trust them to lead the ship because yeah. i mean they have the financial power yeah. they have a very huge stockpile of cash so yes. i know they do not have any liquidity issues in the future yeah. um coinbase there is that case going on so <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> we are sticking in that sinking ship yeah. but we hope uh, there will be light at the end of the tunnel yeah, yeah. so but those are like 10 companies if you, you know? if you're looking at um, like uh, the bitcoin side yeah um, i think it would be very interesting to, for you to know that micro strategy uh publicated publicly traded company in the US yeah. is up 201% since the beginning of the year yeah. in the whole bitcoin directory yeah yeah, yeah so, I haven't really thought about uh, yeah. sailor sailor's company but yeah. uh, i think it's because uh, it at the time when they were just getting uh to have a stock price appreciation i think yes. bitcoin was having its winter yeah. and uh that winter really caused some significant volatility so i was like let yeah. me see how fast uh, gary jensler with yeah. the sec yeah. deals with the ever growing uh you know crypto exchanges yeah. and at the time they were falling off the yeah. cliff you know um from you see for micro strategy what was the name of that company by yeah. the the which one, one? The one which uh, this young guy basically conned the entire world um <laughs> ftx yeah. yeah it has been that long yeah. so for micro strategy yeah. uh, they don't hold uh clients funds yeah. uh, they are not an exchange uh-huh. so they basically basically invest in bitcoin and the entire ecosystem yeah so the fact that the company has been operating uh, in a very clear manner yeah. without having any issues with the sec mm-hmm. uh basically makes it a key highlight or anyone or any organization that is looking to get an exposure in bitcoin okay. so for instance i remember sending you the report from lena alden yeah yeah she basically directly invest in uh, micro strategy okay yeah now um don't you think people will be traveling over the summer yeah travel is uh, so, very interesting yeah business. because i think uh, Yeah, we saw Delta Airlines uh, 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 reporting better yeah. than expected earnings. Hilton, Hilton as well. Yeah, they they are doing well. Yeah. I think they are having significant bookings. Yes. And uh, with the now EPL about to come in a few months. Yeah. So you know, just when the summer is ending, people will be traveling about, so they might experience a bump in their sales as well. Yeah. So I'm looking at some of them maybe to see if we if I offload a few, yeah. we can be able to. You know, have a good uh, look at it. Um, yeah. I, think I, I think the one sector I wouldn't touch, yeah. uh, even from a distance, mm-hmm. uh, would be real estate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, commercial real estate has not been doing well uh, over the year, yeah. and there is a just increasing risk happening across the board mm-hmm. as a result of the high interest rates in the US. So as long as interest rates continue rising and uh, ten-year mortgages are around seven mm-hmm. percent, at some point we we'll, uh, we are bound to see some cracks. Uh, some defaults yeah. and this could affect these companies directly obviously so, uh-huh. for now uh, i would stay off real estate especially us and uh, eu yeah i think uh, with that in mind most of uh, the products we offer are cfd based uh, maybe you could explain the difference between cfd based and of course cash equities yeah so if you're trading a cfd it's basically a short form for uh contract for difference so for a contract for difference it basically means the share you are trading you don't actually own it so for instance if you buy tesla shares uh from uh the fx pesa platform uh, you will not be recorded as the owner of that share in the nasdaq 
So what this means, Tesla doesn't recognize you as a shareholder. And as a result of that, if you make a profit out of that speculation, you are not liable to pay tax to the US. If you actually owned the actual share, yeah. then the IRA would come for you to pay tax on your profit. Yeah. So that's one advantage of uh, trading a CFD. So the other thing is that the CFD mirrors uh, the value of the actual share. So for a person who owns the physical share, they have the share certificate. If the price goes up, then also yours goes up. If it goes down, it goes down the same way. And uh, of course, you are able to trade CFDs with leverage. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course... <coughs> Uh, even if you uh, the company gives a dividend, you also get a dividend. Yeah. But then on the short side, if you are shorting a share and the company pays a dividend, then you basically chuck that dividend to pay the guy who is on the long side. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the most interesting bit: short selling. Yeah. Yeah. You know what Bobby asks does yeah. for a living. Yeah. Yeah. But it's coming back. So. Wait. One what? Fi one final. Yeah, he's coming back. Yeah, one final. So uh, he's talking about billions. Yeah, uh, the TV show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think uh, shorting side is quite interesting because you might see information from somewhere. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, maybe a tanker has exploded somewhere and is carrying property of a certain you know corporation. Yeah. Or the more obvious one, airlines basically, especially Boeing, when yeah. Boeing was having issues. Yeah. People, the price was literally hot knife. Yeah. So sometimes you might want to capitalize on that. Yeah. It's, I guess, immoral, but not <laughs> illegal, uh, depending uh, on which side uh, of I, I morality you look at I it. I don't think there's morality in the market. Yeah, I mean, uh, Wall Street does what it does. Yeah, so if, something, if something bad is happening in Kenya, yeah. uh, we have seen foreign investors leaving, just yeah. dumping our shares. Yeah. And then when things are back to healthy, they start buying back at, a, at, even, at an even lower price. Yeah. So uh, I don't think there's any form of morality when it comes to trading. The goal is one, everyone tries to maneuver the other players in the market for a profit. Yeah. I yeah. think we have covered the long and short form of stock market. Yeah. Maybe any parting shots? Uh... Um, I think as we approach the uh, end of the presentation today, uh, I would really like to think that there will be a big impact from the Fed decision later in the day today. So the fact that the Fed is looking to hike interest rates by 25 basis points, and uh, this could be the last rate hike, uh, there will be more focus on how long the Fed is uh, looking to keep interest rates high. So if they continue keeping interest rates high, then this could eventually hurt company revenues. But then if the rate cut is in sight, maybe they suggest something around 2024, uh, potentially cutting interest rates, then that would be very bullish for stocks. Yeah. So low interest rates environment tends to be very good for stocks. Yeah. Uh, this is one weird year where we have had rising interest rates and at the same time rising our stock market. But of course, we discussed this in the last episode mm. uh, where we identified uh, the fact that fiscal spending has also been uh, really high. And with higher fiscal spending, then we have seen the highest uh, stock market. Yeah, it's interesting times we are looking for ahead. I hope you have learned one or two things. Of course, as usual, feel free to send in your questions, your responses, and maybe uh, one company or two that you would like to check in. Yeah, now, and uh, before I leave, yes, before we leave, yeah, we have just been nominated, guys. We appreciate your efforts to our loyal listeners. Thank you very much. We hope you learn one or two things through this edutainment session because uh, we do not claim to know everything, yeah. but we share what we think can be of value to you. So uh, what are your bets that we win the APV ads as uh, the top as finance podcast in uh, Africa. Africa? Yeah. Months international now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what are your bets? Uh, I'm yeah. really positive we are winning this. I'm bullish. Yeah, We are winning it. And, uh, you know, like our preso yeah. we don't come to to play to lose yeah. we play to win so nilikuwa mm -hmm. yeah. nimewa <laughs> but uh, in real in reality we appreciate your your effort in listening to us on a regular basis for 30 minutes of your time it doesn't go in vain we hope that we will win by the time this podcast goes out unfortunately the voting will be closed but um, if you voted 
much appreciation. We hope we, we, we will keep on giving you quality financial education that adds value to your investments or even just your understanding of this complex yeah. sector. So yeah. today I have a very special request for our listeners. Mm. So if you really enjoy this podcast, kindly uh, make a very small contribution by sharing the podcast to your friends and family. Yeah. And of course, uh, make sure that you type your uh, responses and uh, follow our pages, subscribe to our YouTube yeah um of course you can find it on all dsps um, and obviously you can follow myself at ogola j4 on twitter at uh, rufus ke on twitter on twitter and all x. the other platform okay on x. <laughs> on x on x on x yeah, yeah other than that guys have a wonderful day ahead and uh cheers Adios.